I bought this Banggood SKU18785 power supply kit for light duty use as a bench power supply without realizing what other features it had. Here I will show you how it works as a bench power supply and what the extra non-power supply features do for you. Here are the power supply specifications. I'll read them to you since I don't know if you'll be able to see them clearly on the, on the screen here. US plug, 110 volt DIY LM317 adjustable voltage power supply board kit with case. Specifications, power 2 watts, voltage 110 volts, they also have a 220 version. Pop plug, US plug, output voltage one and a quarter to 12 volts regulated output continuously adjustable mine goes up to about 14 and a half volts and then the PC board size uh, which you can read for yourself as I opened up the kit I started noticing parts that didn't seem to be needed like a 3 to 12 volt hex inverter chip and a whole bunch of LEDs I thought there would be operating instructions someplace around, but the Chinese outdid themselves with the few mystic sentences to be found on the item sale page where they described its other quote-unquote features. Even the schematic diagram that came with the kit failed to tell me what was going on for sure. And, as a matter of fact, this is an enhanced schematic diagram that I got from the company after I asked for assistance. I'm not sure that this is a beginner's project, especially if you're trying to figure out these additional features, although from a soldering standpoint it's probably a good project for an exercise. Note that this is not a how to build it video. We begin with a completed operational device. So, okay, let's take a look at the actual power supply portion of the circuit. Note the five terminals on the side of the unit. The two farthest away are the DC output pins, with the farthest being the positive and the next one being the negative terminal with the black lead on it. It does seem to hold a constant voltage as long as there's no load on it. The blue LED is connected directly across the regulated output so it glows more brightly as the voltage is increased. However, uh, current capacity is pretty poor. I tested the device at 5 volts with differing loads and then again at 12 volts under varying load conditions. It appears to me to be capable of about 200 milliamps at 5 volts before the voltage starts to drop significantly. At 330 milliamps, the voltage has already dropped to 3.72. But it's a lot worse at 12 volts. The voltage begins to drop as the load goes beyond about 20 milliamps. At 70 milliamps, the voltage has already dropped to 10.7 from 12. I think that a person could get a lot more out of this system by removing the socketed 14 pin dip hex inverter which takes about 700 milli watts all by itself. Uh, that would also disable most of the LEDs which of course take a bit of power too. And others have said that one could install a much heftier transformer since the LM317 can certainly handle more power than we're dealing with here. Now let's look at the other features of this little power supply kit. And you are probably wondering what the heck those other three LEDs are doing, particularly since they seem to be doing weird things. I will attempt to clear that up for you too. I'm now going to read to you the features that were listed on the uh, sales page. Features. One-way adjustable signal generator output convenient to provide the pulse signal. That's the first one. The second one, with a logical pen function, period, for convenient the logic level of test circuit. That's the second one. The third one, with one-way buzzer, you can test the wires on and off. 
connect the wires to the power positive and signal input the wire on dash the buzzer sound. You can also test the low frequency signal input the signal from the signal input if there is a signal the buzzer sound. So that's the instructions. I hope that's clear to you. It didn't do me much good. The three terminals closest to us are the extra feature pins. I have inserted uniquely colored wires into them to help me identify them quickly. Since I didn't have instructions that might warn me of limitations on these pins, I did almost all of my experimenting for the following demos with the power supply set at 5 volts. In all but the buzzer case, we use pin 2, which is the power supply uh, negative, as the common terminal for, uh, for uh, sig getting signals in and out of these uh, pins. The input impedance to the features is fairly high, high enough that you can activate them, making their associated LEDs flicker just by moving your hands around in certain cases. And it appears there is some cross-coupling occurring within the circuit board itself that can also cause this. I'm using a 10K ohm resistor to go to the white wire, which is the third pin here, to use the continuity tester. And as you can see, it works. Notice this is 5 volts that I'm applying to the input here. I guess I'd call this pin a fairly high impedance continuity checker, but if you use it, remember that plus 5 volts is being supplied to one side of the device that is being tested. Here I'm going to demonstrate pin 4. And we have the little, the little pins here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pin 4 is connected to the yellow wire and then to the oscilloscope and there is the square wave generator waveform. I hope you can see it showing up on the scope. This is a rather simplistic signal generator. Its pulse rate is adjusted by turning the little trim pot down on the circuit board and I've got a little screwdriver here going down to that pot down there. The pot uh, on my setup seems to go flaky toward the clockwise end, but otherwise it seems to work okay. You'll need a really skinny screwdriver as you can see to get to it. The range seems to be about as low as two seconds per complete cycle, one second high and one second low, to a maximum cycle rate of about 18 milliseconds per cycle. But as you increase the pulse rate, the off time becomes shorter than the on time, so it isn't truly a square wave. Although I said earlier that I did all the testing of these features at 5 volts, I did run the uh, voltage up and down during testing this portion, the square wave oscillator. When increasing the voltage, the frequency changes substantially, and I'll let you observe those changes for yourself on your own setup if you so desire. This feature toggles the yellow LED on and off, on when the waveform is high and off when it is low. Now we're looking at the green colored wire here, which is connected to the fifth pin. And this is the pin that is hooked to pin 5, the logic probe. This pin is connected to another oscillator that's inside the inverter chip that toggles the red and green LEDs. I think red is on for a logic high and green is on for a logic low. The system can still work when isolated from the source with about 10k ohms, although I'm just going to 
touch both the 5 volt and ground leads from the power supply to show it to you. I, do, I don't know if you can tell or not, but you can see that the green LED is kind of flashing in concert with the yellow one. And as I bring my hands closer, things change. So it's a pretty high impedance circuit. And uh, I've seen other videos where people have tried to figure out what these lights are doing uh, because they seem to do different things. Uh, one thing one day when you turn it on and something else the next day when you turn it on. Well, that's why, okay? Now let's demonstrate the actual use of the, of the logic probe itself. So to use it, if you have a low signal, you have the green LED on, and here I've got ground touching the green wire, and the green one is, is on and the red one is off. And you can see that that input is apparently rising uh, to, uh, to an on state all by itself. And so if we touch the 5 volt power to the green wire, which is again connected to pin 5 there, then the red is on solid. Uh, it's unfortunate, but the green LED is just kind of dimmer uh, than the red one. I don't know why. And of course, you can do funny things with your hand. I suppose what's really going on when I just grab the wire with my hand is I'm actually getting some alternating current just from the uh, AC electricity in the air here since it is a pretty high impedance uh, input. Well, that's pretty much it. So what I think we have here is an inexpensive soldering practice kit that can be used as a light duty 5 volt bench power supply and it can also provide limited service as a bench diagnostic tool if you understand its limitations. Personally, I'll never use the buzzer's continuity function. I prefer a VOM for that. Maybe I will find a use for the logic level part, but since it has to be plugged into the mains, it isn't portable. But I might use the signal generator now and then. Anyway, for 12 bucks, it was a fun exercise.